Natal now faces a critical shortage of medicine, given that more than five medical facilities have been looted and destroyed. The National Healthcare Professionals Association says these include a dialysis center in Durban. And to discuss this in greater detail, we're joined now by the association's general secretary, Dr. Prudence Butelezi. Dr. Butelezi, thank you so much. Can you describe how grave the situation is from a medical perspective in KZN? Thank you, Aniki, and uh, good morning. Uh, during this uh, looting, many healthcare professionals are affected. We have identified that the private GPs that are affected in case and only it's bingo, we find that about five practices and they make a total of 10 GP practices that are affected. While the optometries, as I woke up this morning, we have a list of 70 optometrist practices that are affected. And the pharmacies is about 15 of the pharmacies that are affected by this looting and destroying of the structure. So you can imagine that um, to, to fix or, or to try to, 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 to fix the, the practices that are, 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 are looted and we bro break down by, by this looting, uh, it will cost us more than millions. Dr. Butelezi, with big pharma uh, warehouses being looted and chemists, what do people with chronic uh, medication needs do, such as those suffering from TB, uh, you know, other chronic diseases? This is going to be a hard time for the chronic individuals, for anyone, because even the, the, those who are injured uh, by being shot in, 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 in those uh, areas, and also because we know that there will be a spread of, of, of COVID-19, which will increase the numbers in the hospitals. So this is going to be the hard time in the healthcare facilities, both in private and public. And, and since they, they also the, the, the pharmaceuticals where there's the a storage of medicine are affected, uh, we are going to see many of the uh, patients, many of those who are taking chronic medication, defaulting their medication and getting either complications or getting worse and getting sick. Our public sector, they are going to see a, a crisis during this time. How are healthcare workers in emergency should... units? Sorry, Dr. Butelezi, I thought, uh, I thought that you'd finished. Uh, don't let me interrupt you. Carry on, please. Okay, I was saying that uh, if you don't have to sit, especially those who have maybe have a problem that the roads are still being blocked, but those if the roads are open, don't sit at home and say you cannot go and find the medication. Just go and try at the clinics. But we know that also some clinics are destroyed. But just go and try and see if you can get your medication. But these are really hard times where we're going to see our chronic default taking their medications. How are your medical practitioners, especially in emergency rooms, coping with the influx of trauma cases and COVID cases? It, 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 it is very bad to say it, uh, because we know that uh, we were facing the, the, the COVID patients alone. We were not coping. And since we have the, the shortage of staff, shortage of doctors, we are not coping at all. We are physically and mentally drained. And this also is affecting the, the doctors who have to come to work while they have blocked the roads. There is no petrol as they, they, they have been uh, the, the areas where we have to put petrol. Now the, the trucks, they cannot bring the petrol. So how are the healthcare professionals expected to come to work? The more the shortage of doctors and this struggle is causing the more shortage of doctors and other healthcare professionals. And this will lead the, the casualties, the ER, not to cope at all. So we also encourage the government to, to look at this deep and assist where they can assist, making sure that they, they have transport to go and, and fetch the, the, the healthcare professionals where they are and bring them to the hospitals because this is, is real. We cannot expect them, the, the, the healthcare professionals, to, to, to perform a magic in this situation, but we need the government to play a role in this one. Dr. Butelezi, we saw uh, queues of healthcare professionals trying to get to work and get essential foods from shops uh, en route. How are they getting to work considering uh, there is such a fuel shortage? 
this is, t is taking us back in March where there was a lockdown for a level five. And when we were working and when we go to the shops, we find that there was no food on, in the shelves. This again is happening as most of the shops are being banned. And now we are expecting, expected to work with no food in your stomach. But because we took, a, took an oath that we will do our best in saving the life of, of the community. We are also asking in return that the community, when whatever they are doing, they should please put the, the, the life of the healthcare professionals and know that the life of the healthcare professionals, it matters a lot. As they were praising us, they're praising the healthcare professionals that we are the heroes in this forefront of pandemic. But with this looting, they've really, really caused a, a, a damage, a, a double burden on us. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Butelezi, Prudence Butelezi from the National Healthcare Professionals Association. Imagine working a 14-hour shift with dying patients with no food in your stomach.